Okay, so uh, tackled most of the engine bay at this point. We got all the new items on. Some of the stuff I got from the donor car, which is a good idea to have a donor car when you're doing a project like this because you, sometimes you just don't have any idea if it's missing. You don't know what the question is to ask as far as, you know, what a certain mount looks like. And the internet's good for a lot of things, but sometimes you get real specific about, say, these, these upper mounts here that are missing from your, your project car. The donor car, you can document as you take it apart, and uh, it'll tell you where all that stuff goes, for the most part. With that said, there were a lot of parts that turned out not to be interchangeable. One of them was this um, air conditioning condenser, and um, that's specific to this uh, 5.7 Challenger in a very subtle way. Over here, you can see the one that came out of the Dodge Magnum. It has the uh, separate cooler mounted on the outside for the power steering rack. Well, this one has, it's, it's internalized. So you wouldn't think that'd be a big deal, just run these hoses to that. Well, like I was saying before, everything's real specific on length, you know, wiring and hoses. These hoses would not reach up to this area over here and I took a look at the hoses that were on the the uh, 2006 uh, Magnum and it turns out that they were kind of crunchy so rather than put 250,000 mile hoses on this car I decided to go ahead and make sure I I got uh, the proper piece to go in here. With that said, this is an aftermarket piece, which, piece, which is a lot cheaper than um, the uh, manufactured piece. Was some some like uh, retail price of like six hundred dollars or something like that. You get it online for about four hundred dollars, but this is like seventy dollars, I think it was. With the problems being is that sometimes the mounting points are not a hundred percent correct. This one had to be drilled out and moved over a little bit in order to center this up. For some reason or other, it didn't line up. Also, there was no mounting point here, so I had to make a bracket to mount to the top. Don't ask me why they didn't provide one. In addition to that, on this side over here, I had to add this little bracket right here um, on the... Uh, let's go take a look at the original mashed up radiator over here and see that it had um, this small plastic bracket over here that lined up with the um, condenser and that's missing from the aftermarket and then again here's the radiator off of the magnum it doesn't have any of those mounting points and I wouldn't use this anyway because this is the reason that that car failed this thing is probably clogged all the way up to there, although it doesn't look like there's any damage to it. It's, it's got some issues. Um, I just showed it to you upside down. Here's the, here's the mounting area over here. This is the, up, the, the top side. It's a, definitely a different setup than the, um, the Challenger, which has a mounting point on the side like that. Anyway, it's little subtle differences like that. You have to be careful. You can't look at a picture online and and see exactly all these things but I had purchased one of these condensers and put the specifications in 5.7 the year everything that I could put in there and they still sent me one that didn't have this input and that output and then I looked a little harder realized that there were some that had uh, it specified in the advertisement that it was for the internal cooler for the power steering rack so I went back again and got um, got this one so anyway the next thing I have to do is start climbing around inside and try to wrestle with that five million pound dashboard and steering column and try to get that all mounted back in the car and the wiring hooked back up in the air conditioning vents and ducts um, I want to get this to the point where it's I can run it, start it up, fire it up, 
So I'll be doing that and uh, putting the exhaust system back on the car, get, get the vet gas filler tube back in the car, things like that. To see and fill it up with fluids, of course, to see what kind of uh, leaks I might have from all my reconnectings. I put as many new hoses as I could within reason, new serpentine belt. Um, uh, cleaned up all the components that were not damaged, but they were covered with all of that uh, fire extinguisher stuff. Anyway, that's where we're at right now with this project. Hope you're not getting too dizzy, but it's starting to look like a car again. And you can see I haven't adjusted the tow, or excuse me, the the camber. Now that it's on the uh, lowered springs, you can see that the camber's pretty severe so I'll have to tip that back out that's what the uh, adjustable upper A-frames are all about this bolt up here will slide out and kick the, the camber angle a little out and as far as the rear camber is concerned probably have to have a professional do that that's quite a complicated uh, ordeal getting that camber corrected might not even need it but we'll see don't want to get too much tire wear on the inside of the tires with the extra camber but that's where we're at right now thanks